So today I've got another piece of lost media for you, and by that I mean really lost, as in, this is the first time anyone has even seen what this anime looks like in the past 30 years, and today we're gonna talk about it. So to catch you guys up, a while ago I did a video discussing a TV show from the 1980s called Hana no Asuka Gumi. It basically translates to Asuka the Great, and it was about a delinquent schoolgirl making friends and keeping the peace by being the toughest girl in all of Japan. Each episode she would get into fights with rival delinquents, and its popularity spawned two live-action movies and two direct-to-video anime that never made it out of Japan. And while doing that video, I hit a little bit of a roadblock. I found the first anime just fine, but everywhere I looked there was this mention of a second anime that I couldn't even find screenshots of, let alone clips on the entire internet. And ever since then it's gained this kind of mythical status in my mind as something that I would never find, let alone sit down and watch. It's part of this genre that pretty much only I like, where schoolgirls with long skirts and bad attitudes duke it out, and while Wikipedia says that this anime exists, one sentence is not a very good Wikipedia article if you know what I mean. It's actually kind of half a sentence, so yeah, not a lot to go off there. So being the nut job that I am, I dug a little bit harder than just typing it into Wikipedia, and I found bits and pieces of information about this anime all over the internet. A page exists saying when this anime was released and who worked on it, but outside of one very low resolution image, no actual screenshots of this anime existed. And I know this looks like a screenshot, but it's not. It's just art from some kind of like poster that they used to advertise the anime, so no help there. So then I go ahead and I check Google Images, as people often do. No results, just that same image, and also that thumbnail from the last video that I did on this series, so that's encouraging. My next step was to do it again using the Japanese name, no results there. I checked Japanese auction sites hoping that I could physically buy the VHS tape. Nope, not for sale anywhere. It might be amazing, it might be the worst anime of all time for all we know, who knows, no one has ever seen this thing. And that's usually a really bad sign too, because there's almost always some guy with one copy of something on the internet asking some insane price because he's the only one who has it. So finally something does show up, they made a soundtrack for this anime, and it has some artwork, but that's not a screenshot, so still, you know, kinda don't know what this anime looks like. Over the following weeks, I kept checking Japanese auction sites, and eventually something substantial does show up. Some animation cells go for sale. These were physical pieces of the anime, so now that I know that this anime exists, and it wasn't some audio drama that never got animated, my next idea was to go search through Japanese Twitter. Someone had to have a picture of the box, at least, right? Sure enough, I found a picture of the tape, but for whatever reason, they didn't bother putting any screenshots on the box, so I still have no idea what this anime actually looks like. In the following weeks, I find the cassette tape box for the soundtrack, and it too has its own artwork made specifically for the box, and at this point I'm basically losing my mind, because I've found every single thing about this anime except the actual anime itself. It's around this time that I start to worry too, because even though I know it exists now, I haven't found it on Laserdisc either. And for those of you laughing, yes, Laserdisc failed pretty hard in America, but not in Japan, that was a different story. For most of the 1980s, and even up until the early 2000s, you could get almost any anime that you wanted on Laserdisc. And I'm talking good anime, like Big O and the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure that the kids like these days. If an anime came out and almost always had a VHS tape, and a Laserdisc version, but not this anime, VHS and VHS only. Now it's not unheard of for an anime to only come out on VHS, but a lot of OVAs would be made specifically for rental stores, so this anime was probably never meant to be sold to regular people, which means its production numbers Kinda low. So anyway, a few months pass, and at this point, I basically gave up. I search every place I can think of, and unless I physically go to Japan and find it in some back alley, this probably wasn't going to happen. I finished that video saying, hey look, I tried, alright? They call it Lost Media for a reason. Give me a little bit of a break here. Fast forward to today, and out of basically nowhere, someone contacts me saying, as long as you do a video on this anime that no one has ever seen, I will lend you my copy of this VHS tape. So today it is my great privilege to have in my hands an anime so rare, so hard to track down, that even a single clip of it hasn't shown up in the past 30 years. 
What you are about to witness has not been seen by human eyes since the early 90s, and the fact that even a single copy of it is left is an absolute miracle. Even getting a copy that works is pretty lucky. They weren't exactly made to last three or four decades. So before I jump into this, I did a whole 14 minute video about this series, and if I know what I'm doing, there should be a card in the corner that you can catch up with. With that said, let's take a look at this anime so it can stop being lost media. Oh, and spoilers, I guess, for this anime that no one on planet Earth besides me is ever going to watch. Hana no Asukagumi 2 Lonely Cats Battle Royale is a direct-to-video anime made as a companion piece to the then-running manga series. It's set in 1990s Japan, and if you're familiar with Sukeban Deko or Shoujo Commando Izumi, this should all be pretty familiar territory for you guys. The story begins with an acquaintance of Asuka's, the only male character in this entire anime, stopping a fight from breaking out on a subway train. Someone wants to cut off a piece of his girlfriend's hair, and he just narrowly breaks it up for reasons that'll become apparent later in the anime. Fast forward to another part of Japan, and Asuka's just minding her own business, as she usually does, having a fight with three delinquent schoolgirls trying to make a name for themselves. But as Asuka roughs them up, they drop some sort of calling card with the name Strawberry Milk plastered on it. Now Asuka doesn't know this at the time, but a tournament between every delinquent schoolgirl in the country just started, and she's become target number one without her permission. Every Sukaban with a reputation has been brought into this, and the battle royale won't stop until there's only a single girl standing. Also, did I mention that Asuka is 14 years old? old? That would make her, oh, I don't know, the same age as Minky Momo when she was rising through the ranks. And I know it's an anime, but I can't help but laugh at that idea. Anime is serious business. So who started this tournament and why? Well, behind the scenes, two rich schoolgirls just started an underground gambling game where people bet on the winners, and whoever wins each round gets exclusive rights in their shady underground dealings. The opening scene was actually a starting bet to see if someone could get a lock of hair off the Silver Ghost Biker Gang's mascot. Other targets are getting picked off one by one too, and pretty much all of them are people Asuka knows personally. And I mean like, really personally. Even the creator of the series is on the tournament board. One of the tournament fighters is listed as a Takaguchi Gumi, which I can only assume is the manga author Takaguchi Sadosumi sneaking into her own anime. So Asuka slowly starts piecing things together, and she's got a fairly good idea who's behind all this. But just as she starts to figure things out, she gets jumped in a park by what I can only describe as Sukeban ninjas. I would love to know who actually animated this fight, and it's probably the most impressive piece of animation in the whole anime. Super stylized, experimental, I wouldn't be surprised if they spent half the budget on this one scene. So she walks the streets with her hands in her pockets after this, pretty much just doing what she does, and we get some of these really nice cityscapes with bright lights and cars going by that paint an image of 1990s, 1980s Japan that really, you just don't get anymore. And after that, Asuka scares these rich girls so badly that they just decide to cancel the tournament on the spot. But they're in way way over their heads, and once the wheels are turning, there's nothing that they can even do to stop it. Other people are placing bets on these fights that are way scarier than Asuka is. It's around this time we get a bunch of flashbacks that actually tell us what Asuka was like before the series started, and we get introduced to her mentor, a character I'm sure is expanded on in the manga. None of this is going to make any sense for people who haven't read it though. The finale is a fight between Asuka and her former mentor, and there's a lot of romantic tension between the two, but it's all conveyed through fist fighting and gold coin throwing justice. Some really nice slow falling snow falls during this entire scene, and there's something about old anime snow that makes me feel nostalgic for the 1990s. I'm probably having flashbacks to Roroni Kenshin. I almost feel bad even spoiling this, but this series has no chance of ever coming out in English, and if some madman did not physically lend me this tape, we wouldn't even be talking about it, so what can you do? 
I'm just happy that we can actually look at this thing. It's like watching the last two episodes of an anime that you never started to begin with. The creators of this series were clearly pulling from over four years of manga at this point, and there's a bunch of group dynamics and drama that's just not going to translate for people who haven't read that series. And this anime was actually a brand new story penned by the original author specifically for this OVA, so there was clearly a lot of time and effort put into making this. The music wasn't just by some nobody either, it was done by legendary composer Kenji Kawai, who did the music for a little known movie that you might have heard about called Ghost in the Shell, the third episode of Dream Hunter Rem, and Mob Psycho, which I didn't know until this video, so that's kind of cool. And just like the first anime, Asuka was voiced by legendary voice actress Suru Hiromi, who voiced such iconic characters as Ghost Sweeper Makami, and also Bulma from Dragon Ball Z. So it wasn't just a bunch of nobodies who worked on this. Is it the best anime in the world? No, not really. But what if it was? What if this was the best anime of all time? Seriously, think about that for a second. What if I wasn't into VHS tapes and these weird delinquent shows and 10 or 20 years down the line, people still didn't know that this anime existed? How much longer do VHS tapes even last? I honestly can't answer that question, and I don't see this ever getting re-released either. There would have to be some kind of other Asuka series coming out, and if it hasn't been re-released by now, then it's probably never gonna be. To drive that point home, this series is still getting new chapters, and I mean really recently too. Hana no Asuka Gumi Infinity just came out in July of 2019, and if they had any intention of putting this out there, then that boat just sailed, but Boy, is an interesting piece of anime history all the same. Oh, and if you're watching this video and it's suddenly not lost media, or a copy of this goes for sale at some insane price, look, I I'm not a time wizard, so if the impossible happens and this anime shows up somewhere, then I guess the video did its job, so don't go telling me that you found it, because as of this video, this is all true. I wouldn't go through that amount of work to just make up a lie like that. I don't want to hear stuff like, hey, I found screenshots of this anime after I just made a video showing you the anime. So cut me a little slack here. I'm sure it'll be all over Google Images the day after I put this out. And if you want to see more videos about these weird anime that really only I care about, all you have to do is hit subscribe, then you gotta hit that bell, and then you gotta click that be notified about all videos from this user drop down menu. Thing. You know what, just cross your fingers, hope YouTube lets you know when I do a new video. That's probably your best bet. And I'm being completely honest with you, outside of liking the video so other people see it, I have no idea how YouTube actually works these days. I'd also like to thank you guys for 50,000 subscribers. That is a huge milestone, and I could not have gotten there without the community. Big shout to all the people who made this video possible, as well as the guy who got this VHS tape into my hands. Anyway, thanks for listening to me talk about some anime no one's ever heard of. Here's to 50,000 more. I will see you guys next time. Thank you very much. Take care.